All right. Good morning, guys. Good to talk to you. Chris, good to see you again. Been a little yeah, bit. Um, congratulations on a really successful HasLab. There's persistent rumors that have been swirling around that the barge is going to be re-released or the Razor Crest is going to show up at retail, maybe slightly repainted. It seems like these rumors are unstoppable since the barge came out and especially since Razor Crest has slightly yeah. different language. Is there any chance, and I mean any chance, of one of the HasLabs being re-released it either through Pulse or at retail for those who miss yeah. out during the HasLab project? Yeah, um, it's a good question. Uh, and first of all, just uh, I'll just open it up. Thank you guys all so much for, for joining us. Um, you know, we, we love these opportunities. Uh, you know, we love obviously kind of the, the passion, but also it's just fun for us to, to talk, take three days, three hours out of our day and talk Star Wars. So uh, thank you guys for giving us the excuse to do that because it's awesome. Um, this is great. We'll, we'll try to give quick, quick ish answers just because we know that there are like, I think, you know, five questions from each of the five sites to get through, but, you know, feel free to follow up. So, uh, Arnie, yeah, we've seen the same rumors there. We, we won't be re releasing the barge. Uh, kind of, you know, the language was very, very clear there. So I, I will say we, we are not re releasing the barge. Um, for the Razor Crest, yeah, we have no current plans at this time. Uh, and so, you know, obviously, if, if you guys like the look of the Razor Crest, you know, it's a big vehicle. Uh, it's got a, you know, $350 SRP. Uh, we have no plans to do that again. So, so fans out there, if you like it, uh, we would highly suggest you get it now. Great. All right. I think we're moving next to uh, Collector's Cantina with, uh, sorry, is it George or Jorge? I should know this by this point. It's uh, George. Got it. All right, George, what do you got for us? All right. So... With the Mandalorian um, speeder bike with the Scout um, Trooper, is that a re-release of the Black Series one from a few years ago, or is that updated with, you know, or is it an updated version? The, I, I'm just not sure which one. The Patrick, do you uh, know on this? I mean, I. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is the Mandalorian speeder bike uh, that I think was just announced on October 26th. Yeah, um, sure. So yeah, George, that is the that's the same sculpt uh, as the one that we've done previously, and I think it was 2014 was the initial release, uh, and then also in the uh, uh, SPC, uh, not the SPCC, the PulseCon item from this year. Um, so yeah, it's the same sculpt, but obviously, you know, it looks mm -hmm. amazing, uh, faithful to that uh, wonderful scene in uh, the Mandalorian. Okay, sounds good. That's what I was kind of thinking that it was mostly a, 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 a re-release. So I just wanted to make sure that it was, uh, that's what it was. So thanks. Yeah. Yep. And obviously we would just differentiate it from like, it's obviously not a, a repack or a carry forward. It is kind of that new deco treatment um, on both the Scout Trooper and the bike. And then obviously kind of new, new tooling and new sculpt uh, for the extra accessories. But yeah. Cool. All right, I think uh, Caster's Corner next, uh, Khalil. Uh, do we have Caster's Corner? Seems like not. All right, uh, that's fine. We will catch them up if they hop on. Otherwise, we'll go to uh, Star Wars Newsnet with Val. Hey, it's Lacey stepping in for Val. Um, first of all, thanks no for taking Good the time. Good yeah, I really appreciate it. Um, so obviously the Mandalorian is really hot right now. I'm buying up all the Baby Yoda stuff, which is great. Um, but are there any plans to make anything from the Saga, saga series or Rise of Skywalker, which we didn't really get that much last year? We were getting Dark Ray, obviously, which I bought. But any Ben Solo merch coming or a Ray <laughs> yellow lightsaber, which I've been asking for for like eight months, any of that? Well, I mean, we can't comment on anything that we're doing or not doing. <laughs> but uh, we are, we're all the same fans you guys are. So I think just keep your eyes open. I mean, we're, we want to make ourselves as happy with this stuff as we want to make all the fans happy. So, Of course. Awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. I think uh, from Forlom to Zuckus is next with Jake. Hey, Jake. Hi, guys. Good to see you. Good to talk to you. Um, you too. Arnie had uh, half my question about the re-releases, so I'm glad <laughs> to hear that. Uh, but the other half is making this uh, available to international retail or international collectors, yeah. because 
you know, if you recall a couple years ago, you had a uh, second round of barges that went exclusively mm -hmm. to, I believe, I think eBay, EU, yep. along those lines. Yep. And so do we have plans for doing that for the Razor Crest? Because I know there's a lot of hungry, hungry Mando collectors out there. Absolutely, yeah. So that, that second round with the barge was basically because uh, international fans outside the U.S. and Canada you know, were not offered it at all during the initial campaign. I know that there were some ways that uh, fans got them through other channels, but like we didn't offer it at all. And so that kind of second round, yeah, I think we announced it at New York Toy Fair last year uh, through eBay just for international fans. That was because of that. This year, we've, we've been super excited, honestly, like the international, uh, you know, uh, backers for the Razor Crest have been a significant portion. And we're, I've seen some speculation online. We're adding those in. Uh, and we've done that intentionally. Uh, EU fans uh, out there and Mexico fans, they helped us back the Razor Crest. Like we made sure to add those in. And so EU fans out there, if you backed it before it hit 6,000, you're, you're part of why the Razor Crest got made. Um, so at this point, it's live throughout the EU through Zavi. It's live in Mexico, Peru, several markets in Asia, in Australia, New Zealand. So uh, we've been able to work off some, some great work done by other Hasbro brands to kind of build up. And we've certainly built as well. But at this point, it's widely available globally, uh, and we're seeing great fan response. And so November 9th is the deadline for everyone. In every country, we're, we're not doing that international thing after because we're doing it now. Awesome. Great. All righty. Um, I think with that, we're, we're back to the top, back to Arnie. Okay. Maybe this is just collector impression, but... It seems to me and a lot of people on our site that there are just more exclusive figures now than there have been uh, in the history of Star Wars collecting. And it seems like there's almost more exclusive figures than general release figures this day. Is that the case actually? And why is the toy market shifted so heavily to rely on these exclusives? Yeah, um, I don't. I don't have the numbers in front of me. We've always had kind of a good mix of of mainline and exclusive items. You know, both retail exclusives, convention exclusives, etc. Um, and they're for a few different reasons. Convention exclusives, honestly, those give us a chance to do you know fun, kind of more uh, really kind of uh, targeted and passionate collector things that you know might not necessarily work in the mainline. Uh, so we love kind of doing that special packaging. Our packaging team, you know, they love the convention exclusives because they get to do more special things that would, wouldn't necessarily work in brick and mortar. Um, in terms of retail exclusives, like those are, those are also things that honestly, like we, we couldn't necessarily get into mainline. And it's because we have such, you know, great retail partners with Target and Walmart, Amazon, GameStop, others. That's just in the U.S. globally as well. Um, and so honestly, we just wouldn't be able to put out the same amount of Star Wars product without those retail exclusives. Um, and so they give us a chance to do kind of some other, you know, uh, meaningful updates, but, you know, a little, little more minor uh, and get things out via the retail exclusive route. So moving forward, certainly both have an important role. Like mainline is kind of the, the core, the anchor for the line. Uh, and then retail exclusives are a great tool for building out things that uh, we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. And we're grateful for that. Thank you. Absolutely. All righty. Uh, next, back to George. All right, I think you kind of answered this one um, before, but like, like for the Razor Crest, did you guys expect it to be back so soon? It took like 24 hours to get it backed or, you know, pretty much 24 to 48 hours. It was pretty quick. Um, and the sale barge took a while. Um, do you think it, it was the price point for this or the limit of five per person? Because um, like the barge was a limit of one per person. I mean, what do you think? was the deciding point to have it get back so quickly and keep um, skyrocketing it up um, over what the uh, sale barge did. And I, I think it, it's largely attributed to the kind of current entertainment and just kind of the overall excitement about the Mandalorian. But I mean, we really did try and deliver above and beyond on what we were doing with it too. So, I mean, I know like you guys can see, like I've, I've got a barge sitting here behind me and I kept <laughs> referencing it constantly during that project but it was anytime that we we're wondering whether we should or shouldn't add a feature we tended to add the feature so and i i think that showed through and i think people fans responded to that well and probably a little yeah. faster than we expected <laughs> 
And I would just say, uh, sorry, I'm just noticing when I speak, is a phone icon coming up instead of my face? Yes, phone is yes. That might be a, that might be a bug rather or a feature rather than a bug. Uh, but let me know if that's inconvenient for kind of the the recording, and I can try to switch my setup. But uh, the only other thing I would say is someone said congratulations to us. Like congratulations to you guys out there. Like it's a real testament to the passion that the fans have and have for the vintage collection and for the Mandalorian. So uh, we were thrilled to see it. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. All right. I don't think Khalil is with us still. Um, so we go back to Lacey. All right. So obviously you guys are really fan focused, which is awesome. You're always listening to what everybody's saying and what people are buying. And even last year, you guys had said you look on eBay to see what's selling and what people really want to bring it back into line. Um, do you guys have any plans to do any fan voting again for figures or any future plans? Yeah, no, it's, it's an interesting question. And we've done fan votes, obviously, throughout the years, you know, in both vintage collection, black series and archive. Um, we're definitely open to them. Uh, you know, nothing to, to announce at this time. I think it's the whole point of those is kind of for the fans, right? You know, it's, it, it's, we think it's fun. We think it's nice. We know that they've kind of generated some, you know, speculation about being, you know, rigged and whatnot. And fans aren't always happy. I remember the Empire Strikes Back one we did. And uh, we stated this on the record, like, 100% like I was pulling for other figures like there were other figures I wanted we got the results and we were like I mean Luke's awesome obviously he's the hero but we had a lot of Luke's in the line already um, so I think there's I think we try to balance that like obviously if it's not kind of a, a net benefit to fans then it doesn't make sense since that's the whole reason so I guess here as in elsewhere like fan you know readers your readers and viewers and listeners like tell us if you want more of those uh, fans choice polls like we'll do them you know, if we lean away, it's because it seems like they might cause more consternation than happiness. So. Great. Cool. All righty. Back to Jake. All right. Well, it seems like, you know, um, obviously being in a non Star Wars year, it seems like budgets for uh, maybe Hasbro's budgets for Star Wars tends to dip a little bit because of not having a major property, although we'll all agree Mandalorian is a glorious major property, <laughs> right? I mean, come on now. But um, we are seeing a lot of repacks or uh, repaints, I should say, in the Black Series and the Vintage Collection. Is that something that we should expect going forward until maybe we have uh, a major motion picture for, to generate a lot of new sculpts? Because, um, you know, we have uh, the credit collection, we have the carbonized collection, we have the holiday collection, and those are, those are uh, while very cool, those are all repaints. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's a good question. Um, obviously, you know, can't comment on budgets, like, uh, you know, and, and like you said, the, the Mandalorian is, is an amazing property, like it, it's kind of swept the world, taken it by support, uh, storm, and kind of we're certainly uh, supporting that. Um, I, I think repaint and repack again, like, you know, in, in some cases, they're bonuses. We've always said for kind of the vintage, the, the package refresh slots in the line, like those are all extra. If those didn't exist, it's not like newly tooled figures would come in their place. Those are all in addition to what would be in the line anyway. So, so if you don't like those, that's fine. They're not for you and they're not taking away anything that you would have gotten otherwise. Um, so I think we try to put out repaints on and repacks, on, you know, some small pulling updates. Again, when we think that there's demand there, either with existing fans or in pulling in uh, kind of a new, uh, a newer fan, younger fan, more casual fan. And we do that uh, sometimes with the main characters on both lines. Um, so I think those, those all have a role moving forward. You know, some of the repaints, uh, you know, produce fantastic new characters. Uh, you know, some of the trooper variants. Uh, and then, yeah, we're, we, we've got an amazingly creative design team, like Chris and the rest of the team blow, blow me and blow us all away with their creativity. And so things like the credit collection and carbonized are fun. They do really well and fans seem to like them. And so, yeah, if there's that demand there, uh, then we certainly uh, do see those things like that moving forward. Uh, but certainly we'll obviously still continue pulling, uh, putting out new tools, new sculpts, because uh, those are the bedrock of the line. Cool. All righty. I saw that Khalil joined us. Um, so do we want to try to catch up Khalil? Uh, Khalil, do you want to fire off your first question? 
Hi there. Yeah, thanks. Uh, this is uh, uh, Bill Sensio. I'm actually covering for Khalil today. Um, oh, I also great. work over at Caster's Corner. So, uh, yeah, thanks for the invite. Apologize for being a few minutes late. Uh, I would like to ask if uh, if I can get permission to record. Uh, I am not uh, uh, not uh, don't have permission right now. Wonderful. There we go. All right. Great. Uh, so my first question. Um, Uh, so there's been uh, very few sequel trilogy and, uh, you know, Rogue One era figures, you know, that have been uh, using the current uh, real scan paint apps. Um, you know, we know that the archive collection is coming back uh, for 2021, uh, but there's only four figures uh, per assortment in that. Um, uh, you know, only the one, uh, one wave that's been officially, like, you know, acknowledged and established as of right now. Um, so, uh, and that covers everywhere from all over the Star Wars galaxy, you know, d regardless of era. Um, so what are the odds that we may see a, um, you know, a reissue series of uh, real scan upgrades, you know, based on any of those like newer Disney properties like Rogue One or like the sequel trilogy uh, uh, using, um, using something similar to the Rebels model, you know, where we have like a fan channel, yeah. um, fan channel wave, you know, that kind of like, you know, filled in all the major gaps, like into Revan just a couple at a time. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned Rebels, and obviously that's kind of a newer Disney era property that, you know, I love, fans love, and, and we re-released those, and there was, you know, great positive response. Um, and so I, I think you're right, that that provides a model moving forward, and kind of as we look throughout the saga, the different entertainment properties, like, yeah, there's similar groups, uh, similar crews like that, that makes sense, um, or just similar other groupings by entertainment. Yeah, it's, it's not only constrained to the archive, you know, as we saw with Rebels, if there are other groups that make sense, we're certainly open to that moving forward. Okay, great. Great. And Khalil, did you want to ask a second question just so we can catch up and then all kind of know where we are? <laughs> uh, sure, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so now that the um, now that the doors to Endor have been kicked open, you know, with the uh, the the Hascon set this year. Um, uh, Will we have to um, will we have to wait three years for an updated uh, Black Series Jabba's Palace Leia or uh, Wicket or any of the other major players uh, from that movie or like um, are they still uh, are those also still uh, you know on the table before a, a, you know a potential like anniversary wave yeah. of uh, similar to the Empire and New Hope anniversary collections? Yeah, so I think without saying anything about kind of specific characters. Um, yeah, as we saw this year, like, you know, we try to plan things around big entertainment and anniversary beats, but like, again, someone on the team had this fantastic idea for a convention set of uh, Return of the Jedi and or figures that, you know, also made sense in mainline and it was a great idea. And so we don't want to hold it for three years. We went forward with it. So uh, Jedi is amazing. Obviously it concluded the original trilogy. Um, you know, it introduced a lot of fantastic things into the lore. And so we will, you know, absolutely continue dipping into that as it makes sense. Uh, not just in an anniversary year. Great. Great. Awesome. All righty. I think we left off. Uh, did Jake ask the last question before Khalil, yeah. or sorry, before Bill jumped on? Mm -hmm. Was that right? Okay. Yeah. Great. So I think we're back to the top with Arnie. Is that right? Yep. Great. All righty. Arnie. Okay. You're going to notice a pattern to my topic here as I go. So lately, it seems like you guys do a live stream, a Fan First Friday or something like that. And then uh, all those things you've announced go online a few hours later. But again, because there's so many exclusives right now, it seems like collectors are fighting to scramble between multiple sites. And like, do I hit Walmart first? And then are they going to cancel my order? Do I hit Target first? They're going to sell out in 20 seconds. Is there any chance of doing like a more staggered release or something like that? So there's not this log jam? Yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, and certainly that's something we've been trying to do over the course of this year. Obviously, you know, as we've said, it used to basically be New York Toy Fair, San Diego Comic-Con, New York Comic-Con, and that was kind of it. Uh, we started experimenting with global conventions that went great, you know, great response there. And again, kind of staggered things out a little more. And we've been doing even more of that this year with our fan site celebration in March, uh, the live streams. And so, yeah, We've been trying to spread it out throughout the year so that it's not kind of this mad dash uh, at those key moments. Um, and then the other thing I would say is, you know, again, yeah, as I said before, we have great retail partners uh, with Walmart, Target, et cetera. Uh, they're all, you know, they know the, 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 the power and the strength of the, the collector and fan community. Um, and so, you know, all of us are, are working together to kind of make that experience, you know, go from, from good to even better. Because uh, we've definitely seen those, uh, those unfortunate situations. 
uh, we're aware of them, uh, and yeah, we're working to improve them moving forward. Great, cool. Uh, George? All right, my next question is like for the uh, retro line. Um, you guys did like the, you know, um, a, a New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and then you guys are now doing The Mandalorian. Um, what was the reasoning to go ahead and do The Mandalorian? I mean, I get it because it, it's uh, popular now, but you know, why jump it instead of doing like just the um, lines that were actually re retro back in the day, like like um, the uh, three movies back in the day when they were actually retro? Yeah, uh, that was a good question. I think, again, it came from the response that we saw uh, from the fans after we launched the retro collection. Certainly there was excitement about getting those figures back that we had from, from our youth. Um, but we also just saw kind of a broader excitement about the styling and the sculpt and kind of the, the aesthetic of the figures. Um, and then obviously, you know, as we, we said earlier, as someone said, the Mandalorian is, is just amazing and huge and honestly taps into a lot of that, right? Like there's so much DNA between the original trilogy and the Mandalorian. Uh, and I think we were just in a meeting and someone was like, wouldn't it be cool? Like Boba Fett looks awesome in kind of original Kenner styling, retro styling. Wouldn't it be amazing to see the Mandalorian and like, you know, knowing what Ugnaughts looked like in the original line, wouldn't it be cool to see Quill? And so I think honestly, we were just like, I really want to see what those look like. And we were like, well, if we want to see what they look like, probably other people do as well. I think there have been kind of various, and it's, it's just all over the web, right? Like it's this huge trend of like seeing things in retro styling. And so we were like, let's give this a shot. Like it certainly doesn't mean those other properties that are out of bounds. Like I'm sure we will get to them uh, eventually someday. Uh, but with Mandalorian being so exciting and so now, uh, we wanted to see what it would do. And, and honestly, again, the response has been great. Uh, and so I think we'll see more of those similar things moving forward. And yeah, that sounds good as well. I was kind of figuring, but I just figured I'd ask it. This is kind of interesting the, that you guys went to it so quickly. Yeah. So thanks. Yeah. Well, and like Patrick, no Patrick said, I mean, we're, we're fans here. So when something like that gets us excited, like we want to see it happen as quick as anybody. So. I think that's a big part of that. Perfect. Yeah. So let's confirm Mando Retro Wave 2 for 2022, <laughs> and then we'll do Jedi in 23 for the 40th. Sounds good to me. It's, Might as well. It's great. <laughs> well, it's great, to, it's great to hear that you guys like uh, Mando Retro. So that's what we were hoping for. That's what we've seen. And uh, yeah, we, we'll, we'll certainly see more of Retro moving forward. And we can't wait for the next star uh, reveals. So. Awesome. All right. I think we're back to Bill. Okay. Um, I'd like to pivot in a little bit of a uh, different direction uh, for, um, you know, one of my personal favorites from last year, uh, Galaxy of Adventure, uh, you know, which is a really fun debut uh, last fall. Um, for most of 2020, uh, you know, new products have kind of been slow to arrive, yet, um, you know, a lot of the retailers don't seem to be clearancing out, you know, the existent figures. Um, and we've just seen recently, uh, you know, pre-orders have gone up for, you know, specialty and online retailers for some of the newer, uh, newer characters like Ahsoka and the 332nd Trooper, Boba Fett and all of them. Um, Will uh, will there be new figures, uh, you know, beyond what's been revealed so far in this line? And, um, you know, for those ones that are currently, um, you know, currently on pre-order, uh, like through specialty retail, uh, you know, what's the likelihood that those will also uh, end up in brick and mortar retail? So Patrick can probably answer some of that. Um, but I mean, it's, it's a line that I personally love too. So I'm right there with you. I, like I love, I love kind of those more stylized looks at figures like that and mission fleet and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we still have a lot of passion for it. So. Cool. And Patrick can probably respond to, to where and when more than I can. So. Yeah. I mean, you know, Chris said it like, obviously again, as always, we can't, we can't reveal anything that's not revealed yet. Although we did have fun in one of those live streams uh, with a, a question during Q and a, where we were able to reveal the, the Razor Crest has live campaign. Uh, but yeah, it, it's a, it's a great line. Again, it's kind of, you know, targeted at kids uh, based on, consumer insights we have a lot of proprietary consumer insights and those are always first and foremost uh, to our decisions whether it's kids or fans um, and so those were based on those it's been great to see fan excitement towards them as well um, and yeah we're excited to see what else comes from the line cool great all righty Lacey all right. Uh, just like Arnie, you're going to see my questions are kind of on the similar thread, which I'm probably not going to be able to answer, but I'm going to ask them anyway. So it's all good. Uh, 
Are there any figures in the works for Kenobi in the Cassian series, seeing as the Mandalorian was <laughs> such a hit? And if you can't say anything, <laughs> what is the process of making figures like that? Like how far out do you start planning? What does that look yeah. like? Absolutely. And we always say like, never feel like you can't answer questions. We're happy to dance around them, you know, as much as we need to. So uh, Kenobi and Cassian, you've gone very far in the future. Uh, we're obviously very excited about those programs, you know, without saying anything else uh, more about them. Um, you know, obviously we, we always support major Star Wars initiatives. So, you know, that's what I'll say there. But um, yeah, I can't say anything specifically about those, those programs. In terms of the process, and we've said this, you know, on the record before, it, it takes, you know, 12 to 18 months uh, to do the toys. And I always reference, you know, Luke Skywalker from uh, Force Awakens. You know, we saw that on the screen the same time everyone else did, and that's why we didn't see a Luke Skywalker figure from Force Awakens until mid-2017, because that's just kind of what the process takes. And and we could rush it, but, but we think it's more important to get the figures right, because uh, we know kind of the attention to detail that we have and you have. And so uh, that's why it takes a little longer sometimes. But, you know, whenever they come out, uh, excited to see figures from all the upcoming uh, entertainment. Awesome. Thanks. No problem. All righty, Jake. All right. Now, the uh, vintage collection uh, appears to be, uh, so currently, this, this second wave of vintage collection, since uh, its re rebirth, renaissance, um, <laughs> is just releasing basic figures, a few play sets, and large vehicles. But if we go back to 2010, the original vintage collection run, fans were treated to small and medium-sized vehicles, mellowways, creatures, is there a reason those offerings have been dialed back or eliminated from the current version of Vintage Collection? Yeah, um, it, and we certainly do see some of them. I'm not sure exactly what you're calling a small or medium vehicle, but obviously we had the Imperial Troop Transport earlier this year. We had the, the Skiff last year. Maybe that's a medium-sized vehicle, but yeah, nothing's out of scope, like, you know, in terms of smaller, medium-sized vehicles. Um, you know, again, if there's the, the demand there from fans and if there's a way to commercialize it, either through brick and mortar retail or obviously as we're seeing from the Razor Crest through a HasLab model, uh, you know, creatures, smaller vehicles, it, it, it all works. Um, you know, again, we just you know, have to have to see the demand there. And, you know, it, I think it was in a, a round of interviews like this earlier in the year that we talked a little bit about kind of the demand. And we've been seeing, you know, amazing response from the vintage fans, both the petitions uh, and the the you know online campaigns and 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 so we, we've been starting to see some of that as well uh with with sales and so uh yeah you know as we continue to see that we're we're excited for the future of the vintage line i think again we've said previously on the record like there is a bit more coming you know i don't know if either line's ever returning back to the days of 2010 uh when we had 40 50 figures in the line i, I don't think that's happening but yeah we're, we're excited about the future for vintage and i think we'll see a lot of cool things coming great news Great news. Three and three quarter. Bring them all. Bring them all back. Absolutely. That's right. The original scale. I'm just like that. Uh, okay. I think we're back to Arnie. Let me know if, let me know if I'm missing anyone uh, trying to juggle a bunch of things. But I think we're back to Arnie. So when uh, discussing exclusives, you talked about uh, how new sculpts are the core of the line. And a lot of the exclusives have been repaints, the carbonized collection, the credit collection, and things like that. But there have also been recently some core characters that were exclusives. The one that comes to mind is Jedi Luke Skywalker being a Walmart exclusive. And that that was very difficult for people to get. And yet that's such a core character that's part of the line. So can you talk a little bit about, will there be chances for those unique characters to come back around for those who weren't able to get the exclusives uh, the first time, either through multi-packs or re-releases or something? Yeah. Yeah, um, so kind of in terms of which characters go to exclusives or mainline, you know, it's more of an art than a science. Um, I, I believe that figure that you're referencing, kind of we had the, the tool already, and so it was kind of some meaningful updates. Um, and so that's why it made sense for an exclusive. Um, and again, we were able to get that figure out when there might not have been a spot for it in mainline. Um, to your question about whether there's a future for those figures, you know, absolutely, again, you know, it's interesting to kind of hear your question in, in counterpoint to the earlier question about repacks and repaints. Like, and again, I think this all comes down to like, do the fans want it, right? And so, 
you know, where there is demand for a re-release of the Luke Skywalker uh, Jedi that fans might not have gotten a chance to get before. Uh, absolutely. Like we'll, we'll get that back out there. And, you know, we're, we're gathering information through honestly conversations like this online. There's data in terms of sales and aftermarket values. And we look at all of that to determine that. So, so yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, all righty, George. All right. So my next question is uh, kind of goes to the uh, credit collection. Um, why was, why did you guys decide to do a um, card back instead of a box? Cause black series are usually boxes except for the archive. And also what's the purpose of the credit? Is that going to be used as some, could, could that be used as some kind of game feature like later on or something like that? Like an add on that you guys done like yeah. done before with um, various apps and stuff like that, that you guys have had before. Yeah. Yeah. I think with the credit collection, like, it, again, this gets to the fact that Mandalorian it, it just pays such homage to the original trilogy and there's just so much DNA and links there. And so as we talked about a way to celebrate that, you know, we, we just kind of thought about a, a lot of these original things that, you know, existed in kind of the early days of Star Wars and Star Wars figures that were kind of brought forward to the Mandalorian. So uh, the idea of credits, right? Like we've always heard about them Well, we finally see them in the Mandalorian. And obviously in the toy line, like we had the whole power of the force uh, figures with the coins on them. And so someone was like, well, wouldn't it be cool to kind of pay homage to those figures with these credit collection figures that then have, you know, a credit you can use for role play. Um, we also then love the idea of, you know, the Ralph McQuarrie concept art was such a huge part of the influence of Star Wars and fans love that. But we've got this great concept art in The Mandalorian. Wouldn't it be cool to pay homage to that by doing the uh, concept art for the film out um, and then do the characters in that deco. And once we kind of went down that line, George, it was, it was kind of apparent to us to do it on a card back just because we were kind of paying respect and paying homage to the original figures uh, in a way that you're right, we do with the archive because that's our kind of timeless collection and also with our 40th anniversary lines uh, in the Black Series. That's some of the thinking behind the credit collection. All right. Sounds, sounds good. Thanks. Hopefully somebody no got a bonus for the name credit collection because those images played <laughs> during the credits and they include yeah. the credits. It's spot on. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'll pass that along to the person who thought about it. <laughs> All right. I think we're back to Bill. Okay. Um, well, I wanted to actually revisit uh, the retro collection uh, and just ask, um, uh, just ask uh, you, Patrick, and also Chris, um, you know, this is not uh, about, you know, what we'd see in the line, but uh, um, one of my favorite things about the retro collection overall has been those uh, characters that uh, finally got their due in the Kenner style. You know, we've got like, uh, you know, Grand Moff Tarkin uh, from, you know, the New Hope Wave, uh, Snowspeeder Pilot Luke, uh, you know, now the entire Mandalorian collection coming next year. Uh, for each of you, uh, from the entire, like, galaxy of Star Wars, like, all of this, like, you know, like, amazing universe and everything, um, what's one character you personally would love to see in that Kenner style that never got made? You know, if whether OT, whether we're talking something else, like, you know, like, anywhere else, like, you know, what's that one character that would be your personal, like, oh, man, that'd be so cool to have him, like, hanging out with, like, the Kenner guys? <laughs> yeah. Chris, do you want to uh, speak to this? You, you can go first. <laughs> okay. Uh, for me, there's, there's one character that I'm on the record saying I want in any expression. Uh, so I will repeat that here. Joris Shabbat. He is the villain of Heir to the Empire. Loved Heir to the Empire growing up. So if I can get Joris Shabbat in any scale, in any styling, I will do it. And he would just look awesome because he looks awesome everywhere. So uh, that's an easy answer for me. Yeah, for me, it's, man, it's, it's a question that needs more thought than my brain has in it right now. Um, I, I, I grew up with all that stuff. I'm a huge fan, just like all you guys. And you can probably see cases of vintage figures behind me. But um, I don't know. I, I Just personally, I think I want to see some of those figures that Kenner had on the list to come out but never came out. But that's, I mean, Very that's cool. me personally. I don't know that, mm -hmm. I don't know that other fans in the world want that stuff, but like that's Let's what get Mongo Beefhead goes. Tribesmen trending here. Uh -huh. Remember that one from the <laughs> Mongo Epic Beefhead's Continuum? Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and my career started with some of the original Kenner designers 
So we have lots of conversations in my early career about that sort of stuff and my dreams for what those vintage figures would have been and seeing some early prototypes and stuff. So nice. Very cool. Thanks. Absolutely. Um, I switched to a different audio system. Hopefully that helps. Uh, let me know if it doesn't um, or if it made things worse. Uh, so I think we're up to Lacey now. All right. My question is kind of similar to Bill's. Um, here at Star Wars Newsnet and my podcast, Resistance Broadcast, we're huge Solo fans. We want to see a sequel to Solo. We're all about it. Is there any plans to revisit Solo in being that there are so many different creatures in that movie that are really great, like Therm Scissor Punch? Um, are there any plans to revisit those creatures? And if you could, which one would you want to make? Uh, I hate to keep repeating myself, but we can't talk about figures that were on the horizon um, of what we might do in the future. But I mean, you guys know Star Wars is a huge universe and a lot of different things happening. So we always want to keep relevant stuff in front of people. And, but with the, the library of past movies and entertainment, there's a lot of stuff to go back to in the future. So, I mean, I wouldn't rule any of any, of any property out. I mean, there's a lot to go back to and tap for the future, so. Cool. In terms of what I want to see, you can never go wrong saying mall. So yes, <laughs> nice. The end of the movie mall again. Great choice. To Chris's point, this is nothing about what's in the line, but me personally, sure, sure. More the more mall, the better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. All righty, I think uh, Jake. All right, I'm gonna skip down to my last question just because I'm looking at the clock here. Um, since we here uh, love and collect it all. Uh, the 12 inch line, the heroes or Titans, whatever the official moniker is of that line, um, has that been canceled? And uh, is that been like replaced with the mission fleet? And the same thing goes for the micro force. My 10 year old and I loved getting the micro force advent calendar last year. Was hoping for something, I, but I haven't seen any word of micro force or, um, or the Titan series. Uh, we haven't we haven't made any announcements on any of that stuff, so we can't talk about that. But I mean, like we've said before, like all these lines that are part of our history are things that are close to us and and passions for us. So yeah, I mean, I'll say we enjoy them, but we've got no plans that I can talk about for anything. So got it. Cool. All righty, I think we're I think we're on track here to get all all five rounds in, which is great. So Arnie, kick us off for the final round. Last question. Okay, with the PulseCon exclusives that went for order recently, uh, it, the Pulse members were able to order on the first day, and it shipped really quick. And then the next day, it went up for general order with a ship date in March. And the speculation has been: Did you guys go and increase like? ask for another production run in order to meet demand in that case? Or, uh, I mean, was that done at all with the PulseCon exclusives? And if not, why the six month delay for the orders there? Yeah, no, you're, you're exactly right. I didn't realize this was a mystery. Sorry, that's exactly what happened. And this is honestly kind of the benefit of, of pre-orders. I know that, you know, again, there, there can be some frustrations and we're working on that. The nice thing is that it, it lets us know when there is that demand out there. Um, and then just like with, I think the PulseCon vendor item, uh, we were able to see that there was a lot of demand out there and then put in another run and, and put in pre-orders for that run. So yeah, the answer to your question, that's exactly what happened. And, and again, let us know if, if you guys disagree, but, but we see that as a benefit. In the past, it would have just been, well, uh, that's all we were able to produce. But knowing the demand ahead of time, we were able to put in another run. No, that's actually great. Love that you did yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All righty. Final round, George. All right. My, my question is about the uh, child figures that are coming out, like the uh, vintage, the one that's part of the Razor Crest, and also the Black Series ones. Are they basically all the same um, figures because they're kind of, you know, they're all the micro, they're all like small size and stuff like that, or are there any like major differences? Because like looking at pictures, there doesn't seem to be, be be much major differences between the three different ones that I've seen so that we've seen so far. No, there are there are differences on on each of them. I mean, we're we're sensitive to that. Like, I mean, if we're releasing another version of a figure, 
we want to make sure that they're each unique to themselves. So. Yeah, I think specifically for the HasLab one, uh, card back is uh, exclusive to Has. Uh, mm -hmm. The the deco treatment on the Fram will be exclusive, um, and then the I believe the head sculpt on the child itself. So well, he's he's holding the little the gear shift ball in his hand for the hands. Yeah, so the hands as well. Yeah. Okay, so he's actually is holding that one, but it's not in the other ones. Okay, because I was trying to look, and it was yeah. everything was trying everything was kind of looking the same. So that's why I was trying to figure out well, what's the different ones. And, and he's so tiny compared to the Black Series one, and you put them next to each other and he's, he's, yeah, he's three quarters of the height of the black series one. He's getting super tiny. So, and where the black series one had that ball as a separate piece and a little rattly box, like that one, the, there's just no way. <laughs> so it's molded into his hand. So. Yeah. All right. Thanks guys. Absolutely. All right, Bill. All right. Um, I wanted to end with uh, the Mandalorian. Um, you know, which is, uh, you know, obviously a show that's uh, rich with characters and aliens, um, you know, but getting some of the, uh, the big name supporting characters from it, you know, has been uh, a considerably slow process. So um, I guess my question was, um, what, uh, what, how much of a decisive factor was only having a few of those characters, you know, uh, Mando himself, Cara Dune and everything, uh, you know, before the show premiered last year versus now that we're, you know, just beginning season two, you know, and it's established that the show is a smash hit. Like, you know, people are crazy over Mandalorian. What's, um, how does that, uh, how does that influence, like, you know, the amount of attention that property gets and like, you know, the, the pattern of like, um, you know, only a few kind of core, core characters versus like expanding it out to, you know, more supportive characters, you know, knowing um, the popularity of the property. Yeah, no, I think I think you kind of set it up front, right? Like we were always excited for the Mandalorian, like everyone was. I remember articles last year, but like it, it's hard to like remember how that excitement is just different from the like explosive excitement that we have now. And so it, it just is a little bit of a different world. Um, also, you know, John Favreau's on record saying that like, and I think we would all agree with this, like that reveal of the child in episode one was amazing because no one knew it was coming. Uh, and so I think those are, are both factors, you know, as Chris has said, without revealing anything we haven't revealed, like Mandalorian is huge and like, we're going to see more Mando product. And I believe I said in the, the live stream that kicked off our HasLab project, like, you know, if that's funded, which it is, we're going to, you know, I think I said it's a fair bet or we're going to work hard or something like that, but to get, uh, you know, nearly all of the figures there. So like mm -hmm. already we've danced around it a little bit, but like, there are going to be more Mando figures coming for both lines that you haven't seen yet. That's, that's not breaking any news. It's a huge property. There's more coming. Well, cool. and to, to bounce off of some of the comments we've made earlier in questions and with so many properties from star Wars and so many characters and so many things yeah. that we still want to do each time we make a decision for this, we've got to balance all that because it's a good point. And when you're, there are a certain number of figures we're going to bring out and how many of those we dedicate to new content like Mandalorian versus well, finding a place to put in that character from solo that we still want to get out or like all that sort of thing. It's, it's a giant balancing act. And, and each time, I mean, <laughs> there are a lot of properties that don't have the problems we do. And I, and I say that jokingly cause they're, I don't think of them as problems. Like we've got so many rich characters to look at. And it's, it's a blessing that we've got that kind of depth and breadth of all the different Star Wars properties to draw on. But it, it complicates which, which choice we make each time. Yeah. So. All right, lightning round for the last two questions. Lacey, hit us. Uh, for the Mandalorian line so far, everything that you guys have put out, which has been awesome, what's been your favorite piece? Razor press. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's an easy one for me too. Razor. It's easy, yeah. Um, <laughs> Razor Crest is an easy answer. I'm trying to think of a more like uh, niche answer. Razor Crest is just so. I, awesome. I mean, I I love the the Mission Fleet speeder bike. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. with the the little Baby Yoda and the pram sidecar thing. Yeah, people really love those. Yeah, it's yeah. super fun. Yeah, only and Mission I Fleet say, I bought. <laughs> <laughs> I will say credit collection as well. We talked about it already, but just I love all the ties to the past with that. It was a really cool idea. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Jake, bring us home. All right. Final question. Um, the first wave of retros on New Hope, there were some struggles with the, uh, they're holding, you know, new, new concept, uh, re-scanning and designing the retro figures. There were some struggles with getting them to hold weapons. 
That was completely corrected for Empire Strikes Back wave. But now we see in The Mandalorian a Star Wars stormtrooper coming back as the Remnant. Is that going to include some any sculpting modifications to help that blaster stay in that hand? Or are we keeping these on the card? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Are you keeping them on the card? I'm curious about that myself. I buy two of each of these, so I can. One <laughs> and one. So they're all getting open. They're all staying on the card. Well, we're, we're constantly trying to improve things as we go. I don't know if that one specifically was addressed. Um, but, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but most of my vintage figures don't hold weapons either. So, like, uh, I mean, how, it's a balancing act of how authentic you want them. Right. I mean, yeah. Find me, find me a pile of vintage figures that hold all their weapons right. and Crooked, yeah. you mean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got to turn them sideways and wedge them in there. So... Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we have to run to another round, but again, just can't state how much, how much we appreciate this. Uh, you guys taking your time probably during your lunch hour. And again, this was really fun. So looking forward to doing it again. Thank you so much. Thanks for so much. Guys. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Really appreciate this. It was great. <laughs>